Today, what we're going to talk about today is a very serious topic. Um, two weeks ago, I did part one of Satan's counterfeit New World Order. We know that this is coming because the Bible tells us this is going to come in the last days. So today we're going to be talking about part two. And I can tell you that there's been a lot of interest in this. Uh, I posted it on my Facebook page, not the churches, but mine, and I've had more views this past week and it continues to keep going because people are sharing it to get the word out and I think it answers hopefully a lot of questions. Not that I'm special in any way, but I think that the message, the the teaching is helping people to see what's going on. So today I think that the, you're going to see some different things, but I want to recap just a little bit from two weeks ago. What we looked at was a, was a couple of things. Number one, God has prophetic times and appointments, and God is faithful that he keeps those appointments and that God never changes and he never lies. So if he makes a covenant, if he makes a promise, if he tells us something in scripture, I will, this is going to take place. It's etched in stone throughout all eternity. It's going to take place without any shadow of a doubt. Number two, God tells us through his prophets what is going to happen in advance. We know this from scripture. Every Old Testament uh, prophetic book, Isaiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, Jeremiah, Zephaniah, Zechariah, Haggai, all of the prophets, God tells us in advance what's going to happen in the future. So when you think about it as a child of God, we've got a good system going. We got a God that's faithful, and he wins in the end. We already know how it, how it all winds up. So no matter what we see going on now, we know the future plan beyond that is glorious. Okay? So as we go through some maybe some difficult days ahead, we got to be strong. Yes. We got to be vigilant. We got to know what's going on. And we got to be committed that we are going to stand strong. And as the Apostle Paul consistently uses through Scripture, he says, Christians, my brothers and my sisters, be steadfast. And steadfast literally means take, get your feet, stand as if your feet are, 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 are anchored in concrete. That no matter what comes your way, you're not going to be blown back. You're not going to be surprised, but you're going to be strong, standing confident in the Lord. Can I get an amen on that? Amen. All right, good deal. All right, number three, God would unseal the hidden end time prophecies so we would not be taken by surprise. All right, this is very important. When we read in Daniel chapter 12, verse 4, there's a promise to Daniel because Daniel's seen all these end time events and it shook him to the core. And he didn't understand it because he's seen things that were not even invented yet. And it disturbed him. And he was worried and concerned because he knew most of this was all going to affect Israel in a negative way. And he was upset. So the angel that came to him told him, as the angel was being directed from God, to seal it up. Don't worry about it. It's not for your day, but it's going to be for the last days. And then there would be an unsealing, and God would reveal these things to the people that are living in the last days. And folks, that's us. So now we're starting to see some of these things. It makes sense. 10, 15, 20 years ago, you would have went and heard a, uh, an anointed Bible prophecy teacher, and they would be able to explain some things, but they didn't know all things because the timing wasn't there. If that makes sense to everybody. Again, God has a time and a season. And when that time and season comes, it's going to come like that. It's going to happen fast. All right. So as a result, last uh, two weeks ago, we've seen this is what we were talking about. 
So we know now that the end of Daniel's 69th week, 69th week, which started with Jesus, okay? And then at his crucifixion, the 69th week went into a holding pattern, and that will officially end when the church is gone, and then the tribulation period starts. That'll start Daniel's 70th week, okay? We also, there we go. We know we're at the age, the end of the age of grace. The church age is about to close. So there's a time limit on that. It's about 2,000 years, and we are at the very end of the church age. The time of Jacob's trouble is about to start. And for those of you that don't know what that means, Jacob's trouble is the tribulation period. It is the great tribulation period that will be predominantly Israel's time that they accept the Antichrist as their Messiah. And it's going to be a terrible time. Jesus said that that time is going to be so terrible that there's never been a time on the face of the earth, nor will there ever be like that seven years that's coming. Okay? And, if, and, and he also said that if he didn't cut that time short, that all flesh would be destroyed. So it's going to be a terrible time, but it's part of God's plan. And also that the coming new world order and the man of sin is going to rule. The man of sin has many different names throughout scripture, but it is referring to the Antichrist. So that time is coming and it is fast, rapidly approaching. I personally believe from my 40 years of studying Bible prophecy that that man now is alive. He's being groomed and uh, I believe he's somewhere in the world. We may actually see him on the news or we may not. I have no idea. But he will not be revealed until the church is taken out of the light. So 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 1 through 7 have a great promise to us. Okay? And what it is, the Antichrist cannot be revealed until the church is taken out of the way. Now this is one of the scriptures that I really believe why I am a pre-tribulation rapture Bible-believing Christian. And we have some that come here that are mid-trib and post-trib. And I don't know what they do with this particular passage uh, along with a, a bunch of other passages, but this one is pretty strong. So I'm going to read it and break it down just a little bit for you. Now concerning the coming of our Lord, Jesus Christ, and our, our being gathered together with him. So the Apostle Paul thought, and this is one of the things that was sealed for even the Apostle Paul. He knew certain things, but he didn't know the timing. And he's including himself in here that our gathering together onto him. This is, he's referring to the rapture when all Christians will be raptured up to meet the Lord in the air, then we will go to be with the Lord in heaven for seven years. That's when we will be judged, and that's what the Bible calls the Bema Seat Judgment. And that's where you will be rewarded for the things that you've done for the Lord while you were here on earth. Also, we will experience the marriage supper of the Lamb during that time of Jacob's trouble that's here on earth. So it's a glorious time, it's our future, and it's something to get excited about. Okay? Verse 2. Not to be quickly shaken in mind or alarmed, either by a spirit or a spoken word, or a letter seeming to be from us, to the effect that that the day of the Lord has come. So here in Paul's day, the, the church at Thessalonica had people coming in claiming they were prophets of God, claiming that they were Bible teachers, and they were deceiving them, teaching uh, biblical error, and they were leading them astray, saying, oh no, you missed it. He's already come, and you've been left behind. And this was error. And this is why it's so important for every child of God, and listen to me, if you listen to anything I, I say at all, if you throw everything else out, listen to what I'm saying here now. It is absolutely essential that every one of you pray for godly discernment. 
so that you can see what is good and what is evil, that you can see the spiritual side of things, that you can detect when you hear somebody that gives a prophetic word, even in a church, whether it's really from the Lord or not. Because we know that in the last days, there's going to be deceivers that will come in. The Bible in Jude, it says they will come in, they will slip in through the side door, and they'll blend in and sit down. And their sole purpose is, is deceive the body of Christ. We have got to have, and I know that's not good English, we must have godly discernment. That is absolutely essential. And, and listen, one more thing here, i got to say this. Not everyone that comes on TV, whatever station it may be, and claims that they are a child of God is a true child of God. Don't believe everything and everyone that you hear. Test the spirits and test it by the word of God. And because something sounds good, most people that are deceivers will mix truth with error and hopefully they can just get you hooked in enough where they can reel you in and they get you involved in a whole bunch of error. So hopefully that makes sense to you. Okay, and that's what happened here. And that's why the Apostle Paul was dressing it. Verse three, let no one deceive you in any way. What was the one thing that Jesus said when he was on the Mount of Olivet? And all the apostles came to him privately saying to Jesus, Tell us, what is the sign of your return? What did he say? He said, don't let anyone deceive you because there's going to be many false prophets and false teachers that are going to come in the last days the sole purpose to deceive you. The Apostle Paul is under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit when he's writing this. So again, we have another warning. Let no one deceive you in any way, for that day will not come unless the rebellion comes first or the falling away. And folks, I can tell you now, I am fully convinced, we can disagree on this, I believe that the falling away from the faith is taking place today. Yes. You're seeing more and more, and this is one sign that you can look for, ministers, men behind pulpits, that are doing ungodly things. There was one recently, and I don't know if you know this or not, but there was one pastor up in Indiana that uh, was confronted by a, a young woman where he was having relations with her when she was 16 years old and still pastoring the church and she confronted him and he said and he he kind of waffled through the whole thing but he was truly not repenting and that's a sad thing so that's one example of so many of them there i could not I, there's no way i could even keep up with it but we have musicians now that are singing songs and i believe like we talked about earlier today that we're inspired to write beautiful songs and now they're coming out of the closet and saying that they're homosexuals uh, we have an abundance of this taking place today so this is just one one area that you can look at you can see that a lot of people are walking away and, and there's some other musicians that are walking away and just claiming they don't they don't even believe in god anymore so we, we're seeing a lot of this take place <coughs> verse three and the man of lawlessness be revealed the son of destruction that's referring to the antichrist who opposes and exalts himself against every so-called god or object of worship so that he takes his seat in the temple of God that will eventually be built in Jerusalem, proclaiming himself to be God. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things and you, and you know what is restraining him. So there's something holding him back, not allowing him to be revealed and come on the scene yet. Now, so that he may be revealed in what? In his time. Again, this goes back to Ecclesiastes 3, chapter 3, verse 1. There's a time and a season for everything. So even for the Antichrist to come on the scene, there's an appointed time when that will happen. And God controls that. Satan does not control that. God controls that. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains it will do so until he is taken out of the way. 
All right, let me explain this to you the way that I believe it's the only way you can really interpret it. The he there is referring to the church. The church is referred to as she and he at other places in scripture. And this is one particular place. Now, what, what I believe is going to happen when the, Lord, when the trumpet sounds and every Holy Spirit dwelling individual, child of God, is raptured up to heaven, at that specific appointed time, the Holy Spirit will not be indwelling a human being on the face of the earth. That is the appointed time and season that the Antichrist will be will, will come to come to, to, to his uh, authority and power and rule. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. And then immediately after that, God's going to raise up people. There's going to be people that realize that have been playing church for years. And there are the five foolish virgins that missed the rapture. They're going to come alive. I think a lot of them, they're going to get, they're going to rededicate their lives back to Christ. And they're going to catch on fire so much to the point. They're going to be so bold that they know that they will even eventually die for their faith. And the Bible talks about in the book of Revelation that all people during that time will be beheaded for their faith. So that's going to be a difficult time for them, but they're going to be strong and they will be empowered by God. Just as all the first century Christians were emboldened and empowered by God. So when they faced the death, they didn't fear. They had no fear because they had God's peace in them. They knew they were about to go out from this world and be in the presence of God. And it gave them power and victory. And they knew that they were about to be in God's presence. So it gave them supernatural ability to overlook the fear of death. And that was a, an amazing time. And I could tell you story after story. I would recommend that you go out and, and buy the book, Fox's Book of Martyr, and, and you read some of the stories of some of our brothers and sisters that faced that kind of persecution and how emboldened they were in Christ and didn't fear being fed to tigers, didn't fear being burned at the stake. They didn't fear any of this. And you know what happened with all of that? Because people that were unbelievers seen their faith, they came to Christ. And knowing that they may eventually face the same consequences, but that's how the church grew. And there is going to be a great revival that will take place during the tribulation period. The Bible also tells us that God is going to supernaturally raise up 144,000 men in Israel that are going to be evangelists. And they're going to go out and they're going to preach the gospel. And they're going to, they're going to preach the gospel to all over the world. And they're going, to, they're going to lead many people to Christ. The Bible tells us that two witnesses are going to come in the midst of the tribulation period. The Bible tells us one of those is Elijah. And the other one, we can, we can debate on that, but one of the other, other individuals is going to come and they're going to stand and they're going to preach the glorious gospel. See, God is a God of mercy. He's a God of peace. He's a God of justice. And he's a God of grace. So even in the midst of all of this and all the, the, the horrible things that's going to come on the face of the earth, God sends an angel, an angel from heaven to preach the gospel so every person that's on the planet will get to hear the gospel and have an opportunity to repent. And still, many people will still not repent. God is a God of mercy and grace. So, these are things we do not need to stress over because God's in control. Now I'm going to touch briefly on the true one world system. The true one world government is the one when Jesus comes back, when Yeshua comes back and sets his kingdom up here on this earth, he's going to rule and reign in righteousness from Jerusalem. And the Bible is, it tells us all kinds of things about the millennial reign. That time is coming. It's an appointed time. It's on God's schedule. It's on his plan. It's coming. And that's our great thing that we can look forward to. It's going to be a glorious time. And if we go in the rapture, we're going to have a glorified body just like Jesus had. And we may be, when we're here on this earth, we may be here in Dallas just having some fellowship and say, you know what, Brother Mike? 
let's go to Jerusalem. Boom. And we're in Jerusalem. And we'll be, we'll be bowing down at the feet of Jesus. So it's going to be a glorious time that we can all experience and look forward to. When you get discouraged about the things that you see, you hold on to the promises in Scripture, what our eternal future holds. That is what you need to focus on and not all the other disturbing stuff. Just know that that's all going to happen. There's nothing we can do to, to stop it because it's all part of God's plan. But we can pray for individuals. We can pray that some of these things would be shortened. And however God leads you, that's what you need to be doing. Okay? It's important that we hear from the Lord and we stay on our knees. And I think during this time and age, more so than ever before, when you're praying, you need to have some quiet time alone where you really get on your knees and pray, where you do some weeping and you do some sobbing and you do some calling out to the Lord. Because when your heart is broken and you have that kind of contrition for whatever it may be, lost family members, when you start soaking the floor in tears, God sees every tear and God will respond accordingly. So it's, it's time that we get serious with the Lord. Does that make sense to everybody? Yes. All right, praise the Lord. All right, these two scriptures up here, Isaiah 9, 6 and Isaiah 11, 1. When you have time, read that, pray over that, and claim that as your promise from the Lord. That's our future, okay? And in a few weeks, we will continue our study with Bible prophecy, and we're going to get into the millennial reign, and I promise you it is going to blow your socks off. You're going to be running around in here shouting and screaming because there are some beautiful things from Scripture, not Bob's opinion. It'll be from Scripture of what we got to look forward to, and I promise you it's absolutely, it's awesome. I want to actually teach that today. But anyway, we got to get on. So the counterfeit one world system, I don't know where the time goes. In order for this to happen, there's certain things that are going to take place. And I want to at least give you this today so you could be thinking about this, okay? But one of the things I want you to realize is in 2 Corinthians 2.11, this is what we need to have discernment about so that Satan will not outsmart us, for we are familiar with his evil schemes. Okay? Now I want to show you some of the schemes of the enemy that are coming, they're already here, and they're going to continue to escalate. So number one, one of the things that we're going to see escalate more and more is we're gonna see that the devil is going to create a unified propaganda messages to deceive the world. You've already seen the messages, you've already heard them, okay? And I'm gonna play a video here in a little bit and then it's, the light bulb will go off. And he's using a lot of different tools and all of these are going to escalate Satan's one world government. Number two, these things and some of the things that are going to happen are going to implement by, be implemented by force. There's going to be new laws that are going to come. Okay? And you're already hearing some of the sound, some of the breath being spoken on these things. Executive orders. The what? Executive orders. We well, give them well, yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Number three, citizens must surrender their rights. You'll have no more private property. That's coming plus a host of other things. I'm just giving you some of the basic things here, okay? And remember, folks, I'm not talking about Democrats or Republicans or the United States government. I'm talking about the one world government system where all the governments of the world are merging together, holding hands. There's elite people in elite positions, and I'm gonna play this so you guys can see it. Uh, are coming together and they're all saying the same thing. They are vessels, ministers of darkness, and they are puppets that Satan is using to achieve his goals. All right? So, one of the things is the news media, okay? The news media is one of the, one of the avenues that is being used to deceive people, okay? And I'll show you some examples. 
I promise I'll back up every single thing on here. Politicians, governments, they are starting to look for one leader to come on the scene. And I played some videos back, and if you listen closely, you heard what they were saying. And there's even one of the, one of the head guys of the UN said, he said that the world is primed and ready. Send us a leader, whether he's a devil or God, send them that, uh, that individual that can lead and unite all the, the nations of the world and we will accept him. And that was one of the head persons of the UN. And that is what's being believed today, folks. Doesn't that sound like give us rapids all over again? <laughs> it does, that's exactly right. A health crisis. So here, 20 years ago, Bible prophecy teachers could tell you, we got a one world government coming. But they couldn't put all the pieces together. And since COVID has taken place, now so many things are coming together. All those pieces now that we didn't see 20 years ago, now everything's making sense. So one of the things that the new world order has to have is constant crises. And all of this brings about you surrendering your rights. We're going to tell you what you're going to do. We're going to tell you now that in order to save the planet, because the, the ozone layer, that we're, we're warming up the planet, which is all a bunch of hogwash, okay? Uh, that now in California, they're going to pass a law where you can't drive your cars on Sunday. Who do you think that's pointed towards? Us. Exactly, okay? So that's gonna be happening in California. And again, the governor of California and all the other governors, they're all merging together. California starts things that will be passed on to the rest of the country. And I will tell you, keep your eyes on Canada. Canada is headed in the wrong direction. There's a lot of things recently going on in Canada and that will eventually move here. Canada, Canada is the test nation for the new world order. And I'm gonna play a video, uh, I don't think we'll get to it today, but when we pick it up next week, you're gonna be shocked at some of the things that you hear. All right, money, new methods of money, cashless society, tracking systems. You've heard of Bitcoin and all these other things. You know, you, your cards that you get, your credit cards, you can tap them now. They're constantly coming up with new technology. You can pay with your phone. But they're, they're, all of that is moving towards a cashless society and what the book of Revelation chapter 13 tells us, that there's gonna come a time where you will not be able to buy or sell unless you have the mark of the beast. Now, we don't know exactly what that is, but we know that the technology to make that happen is here now, okay? And I think it will continue to develop. But when you think about that, folks, okay? Think about this. So we have a world that endorses the slaughter, the, the cold-blooded murder of innocent babies in a mother's womb. A mother's womb should be the safest place in the world for a baby, right? It's unnatural for a woman to want to do that. Now, God forgives women that have done it. God will certainly forgive a woman. And we, we don't judge the, 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 the woman that has that. But that is murder, okay? There's no shortcuts. There's no other way you can look at it. So what do we see now? We have a nation, the current man in the White House and all his people around him and all the presidents in the past, whatever you want to say, all endorse this kind of stuff, the killing of babies. Most of our politicians in this nation, but not only our nation, but all across the world, endorse that. You even hear some of the, and I'll say this, the idiotic statements that it is a beautiful thing to have an abortion. That is demonic. That is the spirit of Satan talking through that person. That is ungodly, and it's not natural, okay? So, if they can, I'm just gonna throw this out there. Why are we having shortages on baby formula in our nation, and throughout, really, through the whole world? Pre-planned. I think it's pre-planned, exactly, brother. Now, you can disagree with me all you want on that, that's fine, we can, we can choose to disagree. I think it's pre-planned. If they can't kill the baby in the womb, they're gonna starve babies to death. This is unnatural, it's ungodly. That should be the number one priority we should have in a nation, that if something, a plant closes down, we don't have baby formula, we should be all over that. 
That should be a number one priority to make sure that women have food for their babies. There's something demonic behind that whole thing. That's what I'll, I'll say about that. <coughs> now, here's what I want you to hear. The other thing is, they have got to have somebody to blame for all the woes of the world. Go back to Nazi Germany. Nazi Germany wanted to blame somebody for all their woes, their poor economy. So what did they do? They picked the Jewish people. That was the spirit of Satan uh, anointing Hitler and uh, Goebbels and Himmler and all those evil corrupt men to go out and to kill the Jewish people. Okay? So there's a spirit behind all of that and what's coming down the pike and you can find you can see a lot of this starting in canada today they're going to point and, and and blame all the crises all the problems on a particular group and it's going to be christians so persecution's already started in canada they've locked up pastors up there um, there's all kinds of things going on in canada i just seen something recently and I know that the current prime minister up there, what was it that uh, he was recently what he was going to do? Yeah, yeah. What was he about to do up there? He was about to do something this past week. Ban, ban guns. That's what it is. So Canada, uh, they're going to they're going to ban all guns in Canada. They're going to take away the rights for gun, gun ownership up there. Uh, and that will come eventually here. They're already talking about it. They're going to start with that because that's the only resistance. That's the only resistance towards a police state is people have guns. So you remember Japan did not want to invade America, right? They bombed Pearl Harbor. But what was the reason they didn't want to come and invade America? Because they knew American citizens were armed and they had guns in their homes for protection, to protect their families. So that is coming. You can mark it down. They will come eventually. They'll want to confiscate everything that you've got. That time is coming in the future. Well, they've already restricted you know, a lot of the, uh, the ammo. Right, right, right. Well, and that's and that's very, very, very true. Right. So and that's a lot of the, a lot of the people behind all this. They're buying up ammunition builders. I think Remington is one of them. They bought the place and they shut the place down. So Remington no longer makes bullets. All right. And, and folks, I got to say this because uh, uh, I have to scratch my head with the terminology I keep hearing people say. It, what happened in Texas, what happened in Phoenix, is an ungodly thing. It's shameful. It should never take place. But it's not gun violence. Gun violence, that terminology is propaganda. Yeah. And we're going we're gonna to deal with more propaganda, things of that nature. It's a sin problem. It's all about sin. It's human na Man's uh, nature is ungodly. And when you commit murder, you are an ungodly person. It's that simple. It's a sin problem. So what are we going to do? We ban all the guns, and we, we call that gun violence. So what, how's that going to stop me from taking my fist and killing Brother Bob because I'm beating him to death? Then we have fist violence? Or what if we take butcher knives and, and somebody stabs somebody? Then we have knife violence, uh, car violence, running people over with cars. It's, it's terminology used to trick you into believing a false narrative and to get you on the bandwagon. So that's what we're going to go into. We'll do that next week because we're out of time. But I'm going to show you some video clips of what I believe there's going to be several of them. One of them is the most dangerous man alive today in the statements he's making. He's the second man in control of the World Economic Forum. And people, prime ministers, presidents, are listening to, to this individual. And they believe what he says. And they're going to uh, institute some of the things that he says. When you hear the things he says, it's going to absolutely shock you. And it's going to hopefully shake you to be, number one, draw closer to Jesus. Get on your knees and pray. Seek the Lord in tears. 
and seek the Lord in the Word of God and be bold and stand up strong and steadfast in the Lord and proclaim God's Word to everyone you know because we're running out of time. And you don't want to go and then have a bunch of regrets that you did not share your faith with someone. So anyway, we'll stop here because I think we're out of time. Uh, I could go on for two hours. <laughs> So we will pick up next week. I got several video clips. I promise you it is going to educate you and inform you. And I believe it'll get you excited about the time frame we're living in. Because when you see all these things come to pass, look up your redemption is drawing close. Jesus is coming soon. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right, folks, if you would bow your heads for prayer. Yes, brother. What you just said, Jesus is coming soon. I know a lot of people seen it. Sign. The sign says coming soon still there. But they took the name of Jesus off the top of the Jesus so Now it just says coming soon. I don't know what happened there, but I got the feeling somebody might have taken the name of Jesus. Well, maybe what they're thinking is maybe the son of perdition's coming soon. I don't know. I don't know. All right, bow your heads. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the word of God. Lord, we thank you for your promises in Scripture. Hallelujah, Lord. We, we can look forward to the things that are coming, Lord, with great hope and peace because we know that you're in control of everything. And Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you've, that you've seen me in my mother's womb and you called me in my mother's womb, Lord, to preach and to teach your word, Lord, which is a great honor. And Father, I know now that all my brothers and sisters here, Lord, that you saw them in their mother's womb and you placed the call on their life to be used by you in a glorious way. So Father, I pray now that you would reassure them, give them hope, give them peace, give them joy, Lord, that in what you have called them to do, Lord, equip them now to go out into the highways and the byways and reach the lost. Until we can meet together together as brothers and sisters, I pray that you would go with them, that your face would shine upon them, that your peace would be upon them, and that you'll use them for your glory. In Jesus' matchless and glorious name, and everybody agrees and shouts out, Amen. Amen. You are